It is now time for members' statements. The member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Although the final recommendations of the Jeffrey Baldwin inquiry were released a year ago, the government has identified, had identified the need for a new information management system for all children's aid society years ago. They began searching for vendors in 2010 and eventually partnered with Deloitte and U.S.-based e-systems in November of 2012 in order to build the Child Protection Information Network, or CPIN. The Baldwin Inquiry recommended a February 2016 deadline for full implementation of CPIN across all CASs in Ontario. The government had admitted that it will not meet this deadline. Currently, there are only three CASs running CPIN, and the largest, two largest, Toronto and Toronto Catholic CASs, have experienced setbacks and may not be operational by the end of March deadline. Meanwhile, many CASs in urban and rural areas will not be able to work with the confidence and efficiency a solid information management system would provide. This wasn't a two-year deadline. The project had been in the works for five years already, and the government expects it to take at least five years more. At the Missing and Murdered Aboriginal Women's Roundtable in Ottawa on Friday, Premier Wynn spoke of the importance of information sharing, benchmarks, and accountability. We take her at her word. However, CPIN won't be finished for another six years, and only one in five CAS workers will be using it by the original stated deadline. Speaker, this is a very low benchmark, and no Premier sh should consider this a success. Thank you. Thank you. Statements. Member from Speaker, it's an honour to be here today to extend my congratulations to six women in my riding of Welland who will be receiving Leading Women, Leading Girls, Building Communities recognition program. Since 2006, uh, 400 women province-wide have been honoured for their contribution and their leadership contributions to their communities. This year, six winners have been selected from my native Welland. The two who will receive the Leading Girls Award are high school students, Vitri Patel and Melissa Walls, and the four who will receive the Leading Women are Betty Ann Baker, Huguette Braweller, Karen Gillespie, and Bridget Ridley. To celebrate the award winners, I'll be hosting a celebration event in Welland, March the 6th, this Friday, Holy Trinity Church at 3 p.m. These remarkable community leaders have all come from diverse backgrounds, and despite the various barriers that they have faced in different courses in their lives, they've demonstrated a commitment to community building by promoting diversity, individuality, and gender equality. These awards acknowledge the important role that these six women have played in shaping their communities over the years, whether a high school student, a senior. Each one of them is an example of leadership and commitment. Mr. Speaker, these extraordinary women have demonstrated leadership in fostering positive changes in my community, and they will be role models, mentors, and shining examples of contributions that one person can make to building a stronger community. Thank you. Thank you. Member Service, member from Halton. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to rise today and bring attention to some special VIPs who joined us at Queen's Park last week. From Wednesday to Friday, 107 students from across the province, each representing a riding in Ontario, took part in the Model Parliament program. It's a unique and innovative program designed for students in grades 10 to 12 who are interested in civil service and current events. It's about introducing our democratic process to our young people in a real and engaging way. It was a great opportunity to bring together young, bright, motivated students and give them a chance to understand how government works firsthand. Now, Mr. Speaker, I can't continue without mentioning how proud I was that not only did we have two representatives from Halton, but one of them was my daughter, Oriana. It was a wonderful experience and was incredibly proud and honoured to have been selected to participate. As part of the program, the students were given tours of Queen's Park and participated in workshops and presentations about the history of the provincial legislature and the legislative process. They also had the chance to meet directly with a number of MPPs to find out what it's really like to be a member of provincial parliament. Not only was it a great exercise for them to learn how provincial politics operate, but it gave us all a chance to find out what issues matter to them. Their generation will be our province, will lead our province, and it's critical that we understand what issues are important to them. It was a great three days, and I'm looking forward to meeting a new round of model parliamentarians next year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. There is a serious issue I would like to address today, and that is the respect of some members of the government when it comes to answering tough questions oh. in the Legislature. Mr. Speaker, I hear from constituents how difficult it is to trust the government these days, including the Premier. I'm embarrassed to say that I often understand these sentiments and often even agree with them. When our very own government refuses to answer questions and instead constantly deflects serious issues, it is a travesty. It hurts our democracy and it reduces citizens' trust in government. I will provide a recent example. Only yesterday, the member from Huron-Bruce asked the Premier about the actions of her Deputy Chief of Staff. The Premier used the occasion to provide praise for Nellie McClung. I agree that Nellie McClung is an important historical figure, as she dedicated much of her life to ensuring gender equality in Canada. However, the Premier's refusal to answer the question and instead provide a brief monologue on a different issue is problematic. It demonstrates the lack of respect that the government has for members of the opposition Arrogance. and a lack of transparency. I urge the Premier and her ministers to answer questions seriously, and I look forward to honest responses. So do the rest of Ontarians. Here, here. Here, here. Member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. On May 22, 2015, the Ontario Northland bus stations in Inglehart and Matheson are scheduled to close. Unbelievable. Shame. Service hours in other centres will be reduced. This announcement once again rocked the North, and you can't blame Northerners for being shell-shocked. In the last four years, we have suffered the loss of the Metrolink's refurbishment contract, the cancellation of our only passenger train, the Northlander, and they promised we'd keep the, bus the announced divestment of the ONTC, which we collectively fought back only to be followed by the sale of Ontario. We were promised an enhanced bus service, but it only happened after residents took their case to the Ontario Human Rights Commission, and then we got handicapped buses. And now these bus stations are closed. We are told that it's going to be to streamline the service to actually improve the service, and we've been told that so many times. We are, encouraged. we are encouraged by the appointment of Tom Lager and his chair of the ONTC, a Northerner who we hope understands, who we truly believe understands our plight. So we think that is a huge step in the right direction. But the test will now be to see is with these bus service changes, is service actually improved or is it just another attempt to put no nails in the coffin of the ONTC? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member statements, the member from Ottawa, please. Monsieur le Président, the Ottawa community is proud to be the home of Bruyère Continuing Care and its three locations. The staff and board at Bruyère are champions of our aging community throughout compassionate care, research and advocacy. On February 20th, they celebrate the 170th anniversary of Mother Elizabeth Bruyère coming to Ottawa. In 1845, Mother Bruyère and three sisters opened the first bilingual school in Ontario. Since then, the organization has continued its cause by opening hospitals, long-term care homes, research institutes, and more. I was very, very proud to take part in the lunch that was organized by the Breyer family who opened the center and hospital. It was a great opportunity to share a special moment with the sisters the constituents of Ottawa Orléans, I extend, in memory of Mother Elisabeth Bruyère, my sincere congratulations and best wishes in recognition of the 170th anniversary of providing compassionate care in Ottawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, I had the pleasure of attending the Halliburton Kawartha Maple Syrup Producers Association's 2015 annual first tapping ceremony hosted by the McCamas family, Sugar Shack and Maple Bush. Robert McCamas and his wife, Mary Ellen, invited local representatives to tap the first trees of the season and to bless the 2015 maple syrup harvest. 
followed by tasty homemade maple syrup beans and maple syrup tarts. The McCamas family has been making maple syrup and farming the beautiful hills of Cavan Township, located, of course, in Halliburton, Fourth Lakes, Brock, since first settling in the area in 1820 after immigrating from Cavan County in Ireland. Over the years, the sugar bush has grown in size, and the McCamas family, generation to generation, has continued to produce maple syrup on the same land. Over the years, the methods have changed from horse and wagon and the gathering team to the new pipeline systems we see today. With each generation, the farm adapts to carry on the tradition. This year marks the 100th and consec 100 consecutive years of maple syrup production. This amazing achievement demonstrates the McCamas family's hard work and dedication to their craft and the love of their land. This winter, the McCamas family were also celebrated at the 2014 Royal Winter Fair in Toronto, receiving numerous awards, including CP Corbett Trophy, Highest Point Total, and Premier Exhibitor Trophy. Brad McCamas, the fourth generation of maple syrup producers, was recently highlighted in a short documentary video series which features independent artists and artisans making a living doing what they love. I encourage all to visit McCamasMapleSyrup.com to watch this short video and learn more on the McCamas family syrup. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Member statements? Simcoe Muskoka help. Order, please. I guess I, my patience uh, was too good. <laughs> I, I have another statement to, for people to make, and I'd like uh, some order, please. The member from Barrie, for your statement. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, February 27th, Gildas Club Simcoe Muskoka held their annual Gildathon uh, radio fundraising event in Barrie. More than $21,000 was donated on Friday, with donations still coming in from local community partners. The money raised will be used to provide Gildas Club Simcoe Muskoka's comprehensive program of emotional support for men, women, and children diagnosed with cancer and everyone who cares for them. 2015 marks the fifth anniversary, anniversary for this great local organization. Since opening their signature red door in the spring of 2010, Gildas Club Simcoe Muskoka's program of free social and emotional support continues to be an essential complement to medical care in Barrie, Simcoe County and Muskoka. Their talented and passionate team includes individuals such as Brenda Pinder Parsons, Chair of the Board of Directors, Patricia Gilbert, Eileen Campo, Deborah Lucemore, Kristen Dawson, Catherine Spears, and many more. The men, women, and children in Gildas Club Simcoe Muskoka program learn about cancer screening and diagnosis, treatment options, and side effects. They also participate in seminars and workshops covering many topics related to living with a cancer diagnosis, survivorship, family impact, bereavement, and wellness. All funds to operate Gildas Club Simcoe Muskoka's innovative cancer support program are raised from individuals, foundations, events, and corporations. Community support is vital and ensures that their program remains free of charge so no one faces cancer alone. Thanks to the Gildas Club's volunteers and staff who work to make a bout with cancer a little less stress stressful for all involved. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Scarborough Asian Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week I had the pleasure of being invited to take participate in the 2015 Mall of Parliament. Bringing together young people from across Ontario, the annual Queen's Park Model Parliament gives them an opportunity to spend three days watching and learning how this legislature works. I'm proud to see two bright young, uh, young boys in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court, Kevin Wong and Devin Su, taking part in the Model Parliament, Mr. Speaker. Kevin, a grade 12 student at Dr. Norman Bethune, was selected to be the Minister of Labour. Devin, a grade 10 student at Crestwood Academy, was a representative for Scarborough Asian Court. I'd like to thank the Minister uh, Flint and Minister Koto for taking time to meet with both Kevin and Devin. They really enjoyed the opportunity to meet with you and your advice you gave them. On Friday, I was honoured to be asked to join in the model parliament, participant in the chamber. I had the pleasure of being the speaker and moderate the debate on organ donations. It was really great to see how passionate these young people were about 
about this important health issue, Mr. Speaker, and I hope they continue to be engaged, passionate, and interested in politics as they were last week. We may see them back here one day as MPP. I would like to congratulate and thank the, the clerk, Deb Deller, and her entire staff for organizing the annual Model Parliament. As well, I want to thank my colleagues who participate in the 2015 Model Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.